This is Mishmash, a weekly conversation where we try to unjumble an important and sometimes under the radar statewide story that affects you. I'm Alethea Kasbin. And I'm Zach Gorachow. Is there a more important topic to almost anybody than housing? Well, that's what we're talking about this week because it's a top issue in Michigan and the nation. Housing prices have put home ownership out of reach for many people. New home construction has slowed and the cost of renovating existing housing is sky high. Into the mix jumps one of the great alphabet soup names in state government, the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, also known as MISHTA. That's right. This authority, which is part of Governor Whitmer's administration, though it is quasi-independent, historically has functioned as a pass-through for federal housing funds and generally been as uninteresting as that acronym sounds. Whitmer and the new executive director of MISHTA, Amy Hovey, however, have breathed new life into this agency. For the first time anyone knows of, the governor and the legislature have put state funds behind MISHTA, and the agency has discretion on how to use those as it tries to solve these housing issues. We talked to Hovey this week about MISHTA's new role, and here's what she had to say. So MISHTA is like a bank, right? The majority of the products that we have are um, investments, right? Loans, both for single family homes. Uh, so your average mortgage um, to investing in multifamily through the low income housing tax credit. Uh, with the state appropriation, we're able to do grant programs, um, which make it easier for folks that aren't typically in the housing development arena, get involved in utilizing programs from MISHTA to help us develop housing throughout the state. So we're seeing um, more emerging developers um, be able to uh, enter into the housing development arena. We're seeing businesses become involved because of the housing shortages. Businesses are having a hard time attracting employees. Um, So they'll get folks that, you know, interview for the job and accept a position. And then they come up to look for a place to live such as towns like Munising that I'm sitting in today, and they can't find housing. So then they have to say, we no longer can accept that position. We can't find a place to live. And it's really hitting hard across the state. So this state funding is immensely important to be able to meet that that demand across the state for all different types of income levels. Outside of funding to MISHTA, the legislature has also allocated money to specific housing projects across the state and provided grants to local government to offset the cost of policies that increase supply and affordability. The housing crisis in Michigan really reaches across the state and affects all kinds of people. Looking at more touristy areas, the budget included funding for housing for teachers in Traverse City, and it's not just government. Shorts Brewing Company in Bel Air went as far as buying an old inn to provide housing for its seasonal workers. And the list doesn't stop there, though I always enjoy any mention of shorts. Community colleges have also become more concerned with housing access in recent years. On the policy side, you see lawmakers on the Democratic side very concerned about rent affordability and tenant discrimination. Conversely, landlords are really wary of any limits being put on rent. Right. Well, we talk a lot about accessibility to home ownership, but those who are rent are also struggling with access and affordability. Having a place to live is sort of a key requirement, so I think policymakers in this state and others certainly have their work cut out for them, especially as we're also discussing trying to grow our population. We're going to take a short break, but stick around because when we come back, we're talking with MISHTA Executive Director Amy Hovey about all things housing. We'll be right back. Welcome back to MishMash. I'm Alethea Kasbin. And I'm Zach Gorchow. Join us now as Amy Hovey, Executive Director of the Michigan State Housing Development Authority. To save us all some breath, for the rest of the show, we'll use its acronym, MISHTA. Amy, great to have you on MishMash. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. So, Amy, you know, tell us about what MISHTA does, its mission historically, and how you are expanding that. Yeah, well, I mean, historically, we've been a federal-funded um uh, organization where we really were focusing on housing for Michiganders at 80% and below area median income. So for a low and moderate income families across the state. Uh, but that's changed. 
Uh, now we just say we're here to make sure that every Michigander has a place to call home. Um, and we really are all things housing. Uh, and, you know, we're in a housing crisis in our state right now. I mean, the entire country is, but Michigan is no exception to that. And, and because of the lack of demand, you know, folks at all different types of income levels are now housing vulnerable, right? So where we really focused on folks bef before that were really low and moderate income, really we're seeing missing or middle income families um, struggling to find housing that they can afford, whether it's home ownership opportunities or rental opportunities and in all areas of our state. So Amy, this year's state budget appropriates state dollars to MISHTA. You mentioned the historical mission of dealing mm -hmm. with federal uh, items. And traditionally, you know, the state hasn't put money into MISHTA, uh, but that's changing. How does this $100 million in state money free up MISHTA to do more than it has in the past? Yeah, it really is allowing us to work with communities across the state at looking at housing, at families, all the way up to 120% of area median income. So really the majority of Michigan families in our state are now gonna be eligible for um, projects that we help finance. So MISHTA is like a bank, right? The majority of the products that we have are um, investments, right? Loans, both for single family homes, uh, so your average mortgage, um, to investing in multifamily through the low income housing tax credit. Uh, with the state appropriation, we're able to do grant programs, um, which make it easier for folks that aren't typically in the housing development arena, get involved in utilizing programs from MISHTA to help us develop housing throughout the state. So we're seeing um, more emerging developers um, be able to uh, enter into the housing development arena. We're seeing businesses become involved because of the housing shortages, businesses are having a hard time attracting employees. Um, so they'll get folks that, you know, interview for the job and accept a position, and then they come up to look for a place to live, such as towns like Munising that I'm sitting in today, and they can't find housing. So then they have to say, we no longer can accept that position. We can't find a place to live. And it's really hitting hard across the state. So this state funding is immensely important to be able to meet that, that demand across the state for all different types of income levels. Um, workforce housing is just such a huge need. So we're very thankful for, for the state funding. Um, we've created uh, missing middle programs. Um, we also have the My Neighborhood program, which is our way of responding to what locals want to see in their community. So it's very versatile. So we require that the projects that we fund meet the needs in regional housing plans. And so whether it's new construction or rehabilitation, multifamily or single family, or even looking at homeowner repair programs, we have that My Neighborhood program that can be responsive to all the individual needs across the state, which is pretty cool. And we couldn't do it with federal funding. Federal funding has lots of strings attached, as you can imagine, and is really only there to help the, the most vulnerable families in Michigan. You, you know, I've likely heard criticism from the housing construction industry that a big part of the problem here is state regulations driving up the cost of building a new house. Can you address that? Yeah, I mean, it's an easy thing to say. And do we have too much regulation? Maybe, I don't know. That's not part of what we do. Um, but I can tell you for a fact, that's not the only thing, right? So to, to um, build a new home in Michigan on average is like $375,000, right? That's for like 1,100 square foot home. The average Michigan family can only afford 173,000. So the added regulations that may be hindering um, and, and adding to the extra costs, certainly it's not that entire uh, gap. Um, you know, we, the governor has called for quicker permit processes. Um, we have legislation about creating and allowing for higher density housing, um, which I think are some of those kind of uh, incremental steps that we can do to bring down the cost. Um, and I think we do need to look at everything and approach um, 
all different types of things to bring down the cost for housing. But even if we fix those, we still there's still just a huge gap. Um, if if the market could fix itself, it would, right? If if builders were making money off of building homes and developing multifamily without any government subsidy, um, it would be happening at a higher rate. But our building permits are not where they used to be because there's just really not a big as big a market who can afford a house over three hundred and seventy five thousand. So all things being equal, would you rather see more new construction or more rehabilitation of our existing housing stock? Uh, We have to do both. And I know that seems like a cop-out answer, Zach, but we have to. In our built environment, we have old housing, right? The majority of the housing in the state is over 50 years old. Um, It's actually cheaper for us for the most part, to stabilize the housing we have than just build new. Um, But we can't just stabilize the housing. We have to do both. Um, I don't want to lose additional housing units by not investing in the built environment, right? And so at MISHTA, we do have programs that are homeowner um, rehab programs that are very important. But even if we fix all the housing we have, we still don't have enough units for the current demand or the growth. You know, it's a it's a priority in our state to grow our population. And, you know, I think uh, economic development's been on fire in our state and there's new jobs that are going to be popping up in different parts of the state. And we just don't have the housing to meet that growth demand. So we're really trying to be as innovative as we can. Um, to really leverage the funding we have and bring additional partners to the table to meet those needs. In the past three years, Mishta's efforts have helped lead to the construction or rehabilitation of 75,000 housing units. So now this goal has been expanded to 115,000 by 2026. Uh, is there a number that will lead to the fall in housing prices or, you know, as you mentioned just now, like the gap in um, needed housing? Is there a number that, you know, will will fill that? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what that number might be. Um, I think we're a long way from approaching that number. Um, we do know that without incomes going up, there's always going to be a gap in what it costs to build versus what the average Michigan family can uh, afford to purchase. So we do need to look at incomes at the same time as housing subsidy. If we were to be able to develop um, 115,000, will that impact the way that rent has been escalating the cost to rent a home or an apartment? Yes, I think we would have impact. Right now, we're about 140 thousand units short of where we need to be if we don't grow as a state. So that's kind of that key number where we would see kind of rent stabilize. Um, In some markets in our state, we've seen rent go up 30% in a single year. So, I mean, can you imagine all of a sudden you're counting on what your housing expenses, which is most families' largest expense in their budget, and to have it go up 20, 25, 30% in a single year is displacing a lot of Michigan families. There was a huge emphasis in the late 90s and early 2000s on increasing home ownership in America. Um, There was a a theory being like, hey, if people own their own homes, it's much more stable life. It's going to mean, you know, better situations for children, people overall. But then uh, the Great Recession hit. A lot of those efforts to get people into homes sort of blew up the subprime Mm -hmm. lending crisis. Is it possible there can be too much of an emphasis on home ownership per se, as opposed to, you know, something like renting? I think, again, we need both. There are people who aren't meant to own a home and they don't want to own a home. Um, But I still think that home ownership is critical. I mean, that was a interesting blip in our housing market in our country. We don't see that very often. Um, we do know that home ownership is very important for stabilizing families and stabilizing communities. We don't do enough investment, in my opinion, in our state right now in making home ownership um, uh, available to the majority of Michigan residents. Uh, and we at Michigan are working to address that. We know for a fact 
that when someone is a, owns their home, they have a stable cost of housing relatively for the entire time they're in their home, right? Uh, our, our taxes are capped in our state at only 3% increase. There has been some increase, of course, in, in insurance, but for the most part, the largest part of your housing payment stays stable. We've seen in the last five years, as I mentioned, rents aren't the same, right? Rents are skyrocketing. And when you're in a rental situation, your ability to have stable housing isn't always in your control. When you're in uh, a home ownership uh, situation, it is very much in your control and able to budget going forward. Um, and, and we know that families that stay in that same home and have that opportunity to build that social structure that we all count on every day in our lives to be successful, meaning people to count on if your child is sick and you need daycare or you need transportation because your car isn't working or um, you locked yourself out of the, your home. I mean, we all count on that and take it for granted. But if you're in a transient situation, you don't get that opportunity. So home ownership is, is stabilizing for families. There, there's higher uh, uh, educational attainment when you have in the same school district with the same teachers and getting those consistent resources. Um, it, and we also know it's important for communities to have a high level of home ownership for the stability of the community as a whole, for their tax base and such. So we are still trying to focus on home ownership. Uh, we have a, 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 a mortgage product at MISTA that comes with $10,000 of down payment assistance to help families get into home ownership. Uh, we know that dollar amount's not enough. Um, so we're actively searching like for different types of revenue so that we can increase that down payment assistance. Um, other states are up to $30,000, $35,000 of down payment assistance, like, like Minnesota. Uh, we're still only at 10. So we need to continue to look at that. Um, we're also really kind of focused at how can we bring down interest rates um, for mortgages in our state. So we are working on a partnership right now with the Federal Home Loan Bank of Indianapolis to be able to bring down the rate of, of a MISHA mortgage by a full percent. Um, and it's going to be a pilot. So it'll be probably about 50 million. Um, hopefully I can formally announce it's open in the next, you know, probably three or four months. But we're really trying to think outside the box. It'll be something that our state agency has never done before. Um, but we know that we have to do more um, in order to make sure that we can stabilize the housing situation for everyone in our state. So with this focus on home ownership and access and affordability there, what, you know, what does MISHTA's work or how does MISHTA's work affect, you know, rental affordability and access? And why is that, you know, why is that still important to the agency despite, you know, kind of this, this focus on, on home ownership? Yeah. Well, you know, our largest, well, that's not true. Our second largest program at MISHTA is uh, our multifamily. And it probably gets the most recognition throughout the state. Um, and that is funded primarily through the federal government, um, through the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program through the U.S. Treasury. And it's a program in which will help subsidize um, the development and the rehabilitation of multifamily units um, across the state. Um, we're about, well, I think we're somewhere between five and 6,000 units a year on that program. I think we might be a little higher than that this year, though I haven't got the, the total. Um, it's an important part of our portfolio and what we put out. Um, not everyone's meant to be a homeowner. Not everyone can afford to be a homeowner, even when we're trying to subsidize the development of for sale units. Um, and so we really need to have a balance. Um, our, our housing stock for multifamily is also aging. So some of that program is, is actually used, um, and we call it preservation, and it's really reinvesting in housing that we invested in originally so that it can be high quality housing and doesn't get run down, right? So some of what we do is, is fix the current housing um, stock that we have out there. Um, we also use that project or program to work with um, public housing commissions throughout the state. Some of the public housing um, a, you know, portfolio is starting to look a little tired. Um, and we know that Michigan residents deserve better. 
regardless of where they are at the income uh, scale. So we use a portion of our low income housing tax credit program to actually um, improve and invest in, in public housing throughout our state as well. We also have a program called the Housing Choice Voucher Program. Uh, where we administer about 30,000 housing choice vouchers throughout the state of Michigan. And that's a federally backed program through um, HUD that provides rental assistance for our most vulnerable, vulnerable families. So these are families that have very low incomes. Um, we use this program to address the homeless situation in our state. Um, folks that are homeless are the priority for those vouchers. Um, so we really have programs at MISH to that effect everyone from the very lowest up to 120% of area median income, really trying to make sure that we are helping everyone find a place to live. Amy, the issues, as you know, around housing are complex and multifaceted, but try to simplify it for our listeners. Uh, if, if there was a magic wand, what would it take to solve these problems? Well, I think if, if there was a magic uh, wand, I think we figured out it's about a $4 billion problem in our state right now. So if I could generate $4 billion worth of investment into housing, um, that would be fabulous. Uh, but we, we um, <laughs> put out now about $1.4 billion a year through our agency to address housing, um, which is more than we ever have in the past. So while we don't have that magic wand, I think we are trying very hard to find new sources of revenue, of investment in housing, in bringing more um, players to the table. So we now have environmental funding to make housing, uh, you know, more energy efficient, which is also huge because if we can drive down the cost of owning or renting a home, that also you know, figures into the budget of housing affordability. Uh, we have economic development organizations and, as I mentioned, businesses who are willing um, to invest in housing. So while MISHTA is investing $1.4 um, billion, uh, we're getting an additional investment as well. Amy, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, talk to our listeners on Mishmash and uh, good luck in the UP this week. Thank you. It's been fun and thanks for caring about housing. Thanks again to our guest, Amy Hovey from Mishta. Mishmash is produced by WDET, Detroit's NPR station, in collaboration with Gongwer News Service. Mishmash is hosted and produced by me, Alethea Kasbin, Zach Gorchow, and Shana Roth. Additional production and editing by Hearns Laguerre Jr. Mixing, mastering, and music by Sam Bobian. Our digital team is Dave Kim, Sophia Joswiak, and Jenny Sherman. Our news director is Jerome Vaughn, and our podcast manager is David Lyons. As always, if you listen to this podcast and want to support it, you can do so by leaving us a review or comment wherever you listen. You can subscribe or follow us on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Tell your friends about how much you've learned from Mishmash and send them a link. Learn more about Gongwer News Service at G-O-N-G-W-E-R dot com. Remember, we're produced by a public radio station, which means we are listener supported. So if you really, really like this podcast, you can support WDET by going to WDET.org slash give.